let's talk about endodontic treatment on three hypersensitive mandibular teeth that have been super sensitive for a long period of time. We've tried everything on these teeth. I'm sure you've had the same situation. So I'm first ice testing these teeth. So these were the three teeth that just had unresolvable cold and hot sensitivity. After providing a mandibular block, you must provide intracellular local anesthesia. A 330 carbide burr for the access opening. Check, be sure to check your radiograph preoperatively to be sure where the nerve is and you'll feel it just fall into the pulp chamber. You can see how hyperemic these teeth are. The blood is just pulsing out of the pulp chamber. Once I've entered the pulp chamber, come back with your sit nest plane and very lightly anesthetize into the pulp chamber. You can see that that tooth is about 24 millimeters long. First bicuspid is 21 millimeters long. Second by is about the same thing. So this is just a general idea of how long the teeth are. Then, first using the K file and measuring 21 millimeters, which is slightly longer than we measured. Always curve the tip of the file before you put it in the canal and then just roll it to place. Back and forth twisting with your fingers, the initial cleaning of the pulp tissue from the canals. Now this is one part sodium hypochlorite to two parts water, and I'm not pushing it into the pulp chamber or the canal. It's just in the top opening up here. You don't want to put any pressure on this to force the liquid through the apex of the canal. All you're doing is filling that canal up so that any debris in there floats to the top. And this is the Brazilier Apex Locator, and you'd like it to measure 0.5 millimeters, one half millimeter from the apex. Now, what if this says 1.5 millimeters or whatever it is? Then you can still take that reading and know with your rotary files or with your hand files you need to go a millimeter more. So we're doing that with those three teeth and we're marking the length on a piece of paper because you'll forget the length if you're doing more than one tooth or more than one canal. So the cuspid was 22, the first bicuspid was 20, and the second bicuspid was 20. That's my working length. I'm gonna irrigate again with the sodium hypochlorite and water. And the black file is the 40. It's the largest file in this sequence. I know I'm not going to go to length with this file. I'm just trying to open up the coronal part of the canal so that it will hold the sodium hypochlorite and water. This is called crown, the crown down technique. You want to very lightly go down and then up Three times is ideal. I wouldn't go down and up more than about five. Fill the canal up with sodium hypochlorite. You don't want the canal to be dry. You want lubrication. So I'll drip sodium hypochlorite into the orifice here. You can see it coming out the top so that there's lots of lubrication. Irrigate each time. Now the red is the 25. So I've done the 40. Now back to the 25. Okay, so I'm hopefully with the 25, I'm going to depth. This is still the 25. So hopefully with this, I go to depth. And then once I've done that, I irrigate out. Now I'm going back with my headstrom file. Now this has been very light pressure, and I'm going back with that headstrom file, and I'm cleaning, cleaning, cleaning the apical part of the canal to be sure all that debris is gone. Just in case a file separated, it's going to be okay. 99% of the time. You don't have to go back and remove that separated file 99% of the time. Now I'm coming back with the blue file, which is a, a 30 file, and it's a little bit larger than the red one, which was a 25. Fill these orifices up with the sodium hypochlorite. Be sure it's really lubricated. Don't file a dry canal. Now the green file which is a 35 millimeter. Light pressure and then pull it up. Three to five penetrations is all you do with each file. If you use 10 or 20 ups and downs, you might fatigue the file and it could separate. Now back to the black file. Now it will go to place. 
It's a wonderful system. I mean, this is a revolutionary system. Then I'm going to irrigate everything out. Then I'm going to irrigate them with local anesthetic. So I'm measuring the cones. Now this, these should seat with just a little tug at the bottom. We're going to rinse it again, then come back with local anesthetic in a 30 gauge syringe. These are just paper points and I use two per tooth to be sure it's dry. I'm squirting the BC sealer into each of the canals. Then I'm going to place my gutta percha cones, just place them straight to place. So then this is an Endopro heating instrument, very effective for cutting off the excess gutta percha. Then come back with a plugger. Then I'm going to place IRM as a base. And you want to mix the IRM so that it's pretty firm. And I'm going to come back and remove a millimeter or two of the IRM, freshen the margins of the prep. I'm removing some of the gutta percha to make room for my composite buildup. So these are all single rooted teeth, so we're not going to place crowns on the teeth. This is the etch, 38% phosphoric acid. And this is primer adhesive. Now you place it copiously. Then you come back with your air syringe and blow the excess off into a 2x2. Two two. Floss between the contacts and always cure the primer adhesive before placing your final composite restoration. Now this is flowable composite, very good for small composite restoration. The ball burnisher, cure each of those composites, floss the teeth again, check the occlusion and then polish with either a round diamond or this is a football fine diamond. Shofu rubber wheel, final polish, lots of water. There we have it, endodontics on extremely hyperemic sensitive teeth and that's the Dental Minute. Thank you all so much for joining us this week on the Dental Minute. Make sure you press subscribe right now and get excited because next week we are talking about prepping lower veneers something every dentist needs to know. We'll see you next week.